I call the Honourable Member Chris Ockenbaum. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow uh, the two previous speakers, uh, the Attorney General who introduced on behalf of the Prime Minister and indeed uh, the Honourable Trevor Mallard, uh, who speaks with a wealth of experience on these matters through his long service uh, that he has engaged in. And um, I think this will be a very, very interesting bill to have through the select committee and the discussion will be very, very useful because we members of this parliament are truly fortunate in that we're able to run for seats uh, in this chamber supported by the public purse. We're also fortunate the people of this nation have shown a similar faith in uh, making that money available through the democratic systems that see us here. And it's this faith that the bill seeks to strengthen because it's probably um, no news to anybody in the country that we have been through a period of questions over the transparency of the way that we are served in the Parliament through various uh, pay and uh, conditions associated with the job we do. We must never forget where we come from and whose money it is that we are spending. I think New Zealand does have, Mr Speaker, an enviable international reputation for being free from some of the financial problems which plague other legislations where things are not transparent. But, uh, and, and a lot of work has been done, though, um, in recent times by the Speaker and by government to make things more transparent, to make them more uh, obvious. And I think there has been a genuine non-partisan approach, which is a pleasure to see when it works in Parliament, Mr Speaker, it works well. And it is that transparent, independent on, and non-partisan approach that this bill seeks to strengthen, to increase the transparency around entitlements, ensuring most travel and accommodation entitlements for MPs and ministers will actually not be set by the same people who could be said to be the beneficiaries, uh, but will in fact be set by the remuneration authority supported by a person with appropriate uh, experience to assist. The current voluntary control, uh, sorry, disclosure of MPs' salaries, uh, travel and accommodation expenses will become mandatory so that people have the assurance that we're not just doing it to satisfy a passing whim, it will be part of the job that those figures uh, produce. Uh, I've heard a phrase coined this afternoon, which I don't want to be credited with coining it myself, the Carter Clause. It's not one of my choice, but it probably is appropriate because I think people were stunned to realise that there was a fine of $10 a day for not turning up. Frankly, that is a joke. If I may reflect a personal opinion, uh, Mr Speaker, on uh, former members' allowances, I often wondered why the grateful nation should continue to shell out after people have left this place of employment. I was a bit surprised by it. And I'm very pleased to see that that uh, is a contained feature of the past and it doesn't, uh, there's no suggestion that that will be moved into the future. This bill takes the present steps that have been made considerably further than those already uh, taken, Mr Speaker, and uh, uh, I think are going to be good discussions. There will be new questions that come from the submissions we receive, but National is committed to standing by this bill and uh, I, I'm delighted to think it will be and hopefully throughout the House will receive support from all parties so that it is a truly non-partisan uh, bill and not plagued by petty fogging positions of people treating things any differently than this deserves to be treated. We know where we come from and this is why I support the bill and I call on every other member of the House to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Chris Hipkin. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to rise to take a brief call on this uh, Members of Parliament Remuneration and Services Bill. I want to, uh, in a moment, get into a couple of issues with the drafting of the bill, which I hope the Select Committee will be able to clarify. But I think uh, at, the, at the outset it's important to talk about the principles that lie behind this first. And I think we have seen a move to a much greater, uh, much more transparent system 
for setting uh, the non-salary components of uh, services provided to members and entitlements, if we could use the word entitlements provided to members, over the last few years. And I think that's been a very welcome thing. I think the public have welcomed that. Uh, and I think it has uh, led to a, a higher standard of accountability within the House. And I think that that is a, a very welcome thing. Uh, I think what we're doing in this bill is moving a step further, which is to institute a further degree of independence in the determination around some of these matters. At the moment, the Remuneration Authority already determine what salaries and allowances members are paid. This bill goes a step further and transfers to them the responsibility for also determining uh, travel and accommodation related matters. And I think that that is also useful because those are the matters, as the Attorney General pointed out when he spoke. Those are the matters in which members could also be deemed to have more of an, a personal interest. Uh, it leaves with the Speaker uh, the, the responsibility for determining matters around member support for out-of-parliament offices and for in-parliament offices, areas where clearly there is unlikely to be any uh, perception of members having a personal interest in those matters, so they remain with the Speaker. But what it is doing is it is instituting a, degree of, a, a further degree of independence in any matters where members uh, have, may, may be perceived to have a personal interest. Although I would argue in the tra case of travel.